manufacturers to um, consumer product goods manufacturers, clothing manufacturers, food manufacturers across the board. So while we, the public, the citizens, the, the consumer citizens who don't work in supply-side technology, while we kind of blithely think, well, I haven't seen it in my own home yet, um, maybe it's kind of quietly gone away, multi-millions of dollars of investment are happening behind the scenes. Now, the plan down the road, uh, once we get past the crate and pallet shipping uh, tagging, is to migrate to what's called uh, EPC. And what you see here is um, an EPC code. Now, let me see, a lot of acronyms, RFID, EPC. Let me see if I can um, make this easy. Currently, the barcode is the UPC. It stands for Universal Product Code. The UPC is going to be replaced, if they have their way, um, with the EPC, which is the Electronic Product Code. Here's a string of it. Um, it starts off with a, a couple of pieces of information. The first field is just a technical issue that tells you which version of EPC you're looking at. The second field tells you the manufacturer. The third field tells you the product. And then that fourth field towards the end, that serial number, tells you a unique ID number. And it's kind of probably the best way to think about that serial number is like a social security number. There's only one social security number that corresponds to you, and there will only be one serial number corresponding to an individual item. So what this EPC number means is you'll program this. They'll, they'll, they'll actually program this into the chip. They will affix one of these RFID tags onto everything. And then every individual item as it rolls off an assembly line will be issued its own unique number, different from every other item. So every light bulb, every uh, can of Coke, every pair of shoes, every pair of socks, uh, every pencil, every everything will literally have its own unique ID number trackable um, at a distance. And that's the other piece. That's what the antenna does. So the chip gives you the unique ID number. The antenna gives you the distance tracking. Now, it's important not to get confused about tracking at a distance. By tracking at a distance, I'm not talking about a satellite in space able to monitor what's in your living room. By tracking at a distance, it's essentially as far away as you can get with that reader device and still get a read. Now, as we saw with the Mu chip, some of them you got to get right up on it in order to read it. Other tags, like the ones that they're using at Walmart in those warehouses, are operating in a frequency and have an antenna size to where they can get about anywhere from 10 to 20 feet away and still be able to read those. And their model is in those warehouses. They have reader devices on either side of the, the loading dock going into the warehouse. And as the item comes through on a forklift, those reader devices send out their pulse of energy, get back the signal, and they can make an automatic uh, note to the inventory control that that thing has gone in. What that also means with that read range is that if you all had RFID devices or RFID tags in your clothing and in the things in your purses and wallets and shoes and, and backpacks, um, someone could simply mill through the crowd with a reader device, one of those little handheld devices maybe in a backpack, and pick up all of those unique numbers. All right. Um, so the, the unique serial number is crucial. The reading at a distance is crucial. Um, probably the maximum distance that I've heard of being able to read an RFID tag legally is um, yeah, maybe 30 feet. I've seen some applications where you could get 60 feet, but realistically, you're, you're probably talking 10 to 20 feet on, um, on those tags, and some of them more like 5 feet. Uh, if I put a reader device in a doorway, though, that's about, I don't need 20 feet to read you as you walk through a doorway. I can just do an electronic frisk with a reader device on either side of the door. Okay. Um, th this, this picture, <laughs> just to give you a sense of how... Um, What's the word I want? How, how intent on tracking everything the folks behind a lot of these um, plans are. This is actually a picture of um, a guy out in the uh, frozen tundra holding an antenna to track reindeer. <laughs> and one of the uh, applications for radio frequency ID is literally putting them on animals. Collars, injectables. Um, they, they've even super glued them onto the feathers of birds so that they could track them at a distance as well. Uh, I just thought that was a, a pretty startling uh, image there that you can actually go out. And in fact, the, the, this picture actually comes from a, a research uh, plan to help Native people maintain their way of life, which I think is the ultimate irony. They're helping them maintain their way of life, which is, re which is herding reindeer. And they're doing it by putting collars on the reindeer and enabling them to use the antenna so they can find the reindeer. So that, that's going to help them um, sort of keep, keep close to the, their, their roots in nature. Um, more, more to the point here, though, are plans to put RFID tags in our passports. 
and then we will become the reindeer. <laughs> Uh, the picture that you see here um, is a, uh, an image of the, the sort of stock with which uh, passports are made. There is a, an organization that deals with passport standards, and they have uh, essentially issued a mandate that our U.S. passports will contain RFID. They're going to begin uh, rolling this out in certain select locations as early as the early part of 2005. Um, the, there are many, many problems associated with this application. One of them is that if you have a passport in your pocket and you can read it from many feet away, that passport on that chip contains information encoded about who you are and what your nationality is and all of the other information that's visible on your passport. And now, without you even taking it out of your wallet, <laughs> someone could read it right through your wallet. Right, right through your, your purse, your backpack, your suitcase, et cetera, including hostile governments, including pickpockets, including anybody who can get a hold of that reader device. Now, what's, what's especially disturbing about this is that the version of RFID they're putting in the passports is not like that little Mew chip where the guy couldn't read it even if he had the right, you know, even if he had a reader device. This is a version anybody could read. You could go on the internet and for you know, a couple grand, you could buy the reader device yourself to read this. And in fact, if you were a pickpocket, it would probably be a good investment to do exactly that. So our concern, and this concern has been expressed by many people in the privacy community um, to the folks in our government who are promoting this use of RFID, this is a terrible idea. It's an absolutely awful idea to be able to remotely read the information on passports. It just, just, I don't even know what they're thinking. So um, I think it's already beginning. This notion of we will be tracked through RFID devices is, is, is coming, and it's coming fairly quickly. Um, here's another uh, picture. Antenna location on a phys finished passport, quite unvisible. This actually came from a, uh, a presentation on this topic, and I believe it was originally in, in French. So uh, this translation there of unvisible. But I, I thought it was interesting that he made a point of, of um, specifying that it could be made invisible. So. I, I don't know what their original plan was. They would just give, the, give us these things and not tell us that they had RFID in them. You know, again, it gets back to the exploding 20. It's not the fact of whether or not it's in there. It's the fact of, you know, that we would even suspect that they might do something like that without telling us. All right. Um, I want to talk about a couple things that I've done in the last year. One of them was uh, I flew to the German town of Rheinberg to find out why IBM had this to say. Residents of the German town of Rheinberg will find themselves guinea pigs in what Metro and its partners hope will become a global standard within the next five to ten years. Now, uh, there's a store in Germany called the Future Store, the Metro Future Store. And it is a, a, a store where they have taken all of the um, consumer product manufacturers, all the integrators, all the IBMs, all the software manufacturers, and gotten them all together to create sort of a test environment with real live shoppers where they can check out their technology and they can test it and see what they can, what they can and can't do with it in a real store. Um, here's some of the companies involved in the, uh, the RFID Future Store in Rheinberg, Germany. And I flew out there the end of January this year, 2004, and I, along with a German privacy group and a camera crew and a couple of photographers, had a, uh, a three-and-a-half-hour tour of the store by the executives in charge of it. So they showed us around. You know, there's, there's me with my camera crew. Uh, as you see, I'm holding an RFID tag that is next to a DVD. Um, one of the more expensive items in the store that they might want to tag so that they could prevent shoplifting. And there's me out in front of the store. It's actually called the Extra Future Store. There's no real way of knowing the store is any different from any other store in the Extra Chain except for the little words Future Store, which you can barely see there. Um, once you get inside, there's a couple of, a couple of signs and other things, but I, my observation was most people were walking right past them just intent on doing their shopping. They're not interested in some technology that IBM's testing out. They're interested in going in and getting their groceries and leaving. Um, you see me on the right-hand side checking out what's called a smart shelf. And the smart shelf is a shelf that has been fitted with an RFID reader directly incorporated into the shelf. And remember that little Pantene lid that I showed you with the tag on it? That's where I got it. So what, what they've done is they've put the RFID tag, stuck it on there just like a price tag with a barcode onto the Pantene. They put it on the shelf, and a reader device in the shelf picks up the presence of those Pantene shampoo bottles. Now, their idea here is what they call real-time inventory. So as it gets down to the last, say, two bottles, it would send out a little alert to the back room, which would tell a stock boy to come out and put some more Pantene shampoo on the shelf. 
That's the main reason why they want what's called item level tagging. That means putting it on the individual item. Uh, we have many reasons not to want that as consumers. 